everybody welcome to system crafters i'm david wilson and today we're back with another instance of the system crafters live series of streams where we get together as a community and chat about whatever uh interesting topic that i've concocted concocted for the week as i always tend to say and this week i actually have something worth talking about i think uh, which is um uh showing off a little bit of the functionality for um oh, let's see i need to fix this I'm trying something new today with uh, this stream chat. I don't know if it's even visible to read this, but you get to see the army of David's again. Anyway, yeah, we're going to check out the um, uh, tab bar in Emacs and see what kind of stuff we can make of it. I don't know how to make the text bigger on this. Let's see. Text, color, font size. Can I increase that? I wonder if it would do it live. Appenzell, you have a good eye. I am back on EXWM, that's true. Uh, can I restart this somehow? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, if I do that, it's gonna expose the link. This is not showing up very nicely, is it? A Little bit of uh, behind the scenes look here. I don't know if this is gonna work. Because it's very... Like, it doesn't show very much, does it? Let me see if I extend this out. There we go. Ah, thank you, Carmichael1197, for subscribing. Okay, let's just put this here and see what it does. Let me know if the chat is hard to read like that as we go through. Because I'm I'm testing this new stuff out. So, so here's what I did. Um, for a while, I've been wanting to set up something like... Uh, Streamlabs on uh, OBS, which is basically like a an overlay that you can load into OBS to show things like you know notifications when people subscribe or uh, when they give donations or even like a chat box like you see on the screen right now. Um, and uh, I was not able to use it before because the version of OBS I had installed on Geeks did not have the browser control because it's got like the Chromium embedded framework and it's hard to get that to build in Geeks. Well. It may be hard to get that to building gigs. We spent like five minutes on it last week and didn't get any progress made. But um, I figured out that if you install OBS via Flatpak on Geeks, uh, you do get the full browser control. So I was finally able to set up Streamlabs to get these overlays uh, inside of the stream, which is great because I don't have to take up part of my screen space to look at uh, chat anymore. I'll still be looking at it on my other screen here, uh, but at least you don't have to see it on the screen at the same time, which is nice. Um, let's see. And anything else interesting to say about that? Not really. I'm, I'm going to try to experiment more with this stuff as time goes on, because uh, I think I could do some, some cool stream integrations, but uh, for now it's going to be super basic and kind of uh, janky with the sounds that you may hear from it. So let me say hello to some folks here. Um, I can't see everybody's messages, but I see uh, case, Elijah, Gnu Ninja, uh, Rahul, Appenzel, uh, Ilya, Hyder. Uh, Piotr, Daigo, uh, Pimic, Justin, let's see, who else, Block, Vitaly, Rostislav, uh, Hyder says, whoa, notifications, yeah, that sound might get annoying, so let me know if it's too loud, Gan says, Kalispera, Kalispera, Gavin says, Stump will miss you, man, uh, yeah, I um, kind of got used to with the way things worked in EXWM and it became a little bit limiting to me, I think, to have uh, Stump not really set up all the way. So I just went back to EXWM because I'm very comfortable with it. Steve says, I'm in the middle of tweaking with Doom mode line. That's cool. Hey, Philip. All right. So yeah, that the chat box thing is really annoying me because it's not that big. I just keep like stretching it out. 
Is there a way to, re to make it refresh? Okay. Um, yeah, that's just a problem here. I don't have two screens. So I can't actually... Yeah, I think it's going to expose me a little bit if I do that. So let's just do this. This is not what you expected to see at the beginning of the stream, right? Jeez. All right, how about that? Uh, let's see. Duncan says, uh, have you settled on a completion framework? Uh, yes, I... Um I've been using Vertico for months now, and I love Vertico. I think it's great. I, I don't really have any complaints with it. Um, and also, there's something recently that happened that I haven't covered on the channel yet, which is uh, Vertico got a number of extensions uh, shipped along with the package for uh, extra functionality that you might, might want. So uh, we'll take a look at that one day because I think that there's a lot of stuff in there that you're probably looking for if you came from Ivy or Helm. Uh, so this stuff that you can just basically require the feature and just pull it into your configuration, which is kind of nice. So I, I need to do that myself because I've got some hacks that uh, would be uh, removed if I started using some of the vertical extensions. So uh, we'll talk about that one day for sure. Maybe pretty soon because it's worth talking about. But yeah, um, Vertico is great. I love it. I need to get uh, Daniel Mindler on here to talk about it. Justin says Inception. Let's see. I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry. Uh, but buenos, diga, buenos dias. Anyway, so updates. So some of you may have seen uh, this week, I announced that my second YouTube channel is now live. Uh, it's called Flux Harmonic. And uh, it's basically the channel where I'm gonna do more, um, I guess freeform project work where I'm gonna be doing live coding, uh, building uh, tools for my various creative projects from scratch. But I'm also gonna be doing things like, you know, making music, working on uh, video editing, more like techniques. I won't, won't, I won't be doing actual video editing on the stream aside from just like, you know, testing out tools. Uh, also like, you know, graphic design tools, a lot of stuff that I, I kinda wanna do personally. And I've been thinking about them for a long time. I just haven't had the time. So I'm just gonna make the time by doing two live streams per week, uh, about three hours each, if I can stand it and uh, see how that goes. So if you want to uh, follow that channel, um, you can actually go to uh, HTTP colon slash slash, don't go to HTTPS because it doesn't work, uh, fluxharmonic.live, and it will take you right to the YouTube channel. Uh, soon, whenever I get enough subscribers on the channel and everything goes the right way, I'll be able to get a, like a custom URL for the channel so you don't have to use the, the, uh, the link that I just showed you. But uh, this is the channel, just go there and give it a subscribe if you're interested to see the the streams, uh, the first one's gonna be next Tuesday. Uh, it's gonna be at 1 p.m. UTC, which is 3 p.m. my time. And it's like, I wanna say 6 a.m. Pacific time in the United States and 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So that's a little bit early for the people in the US. I apologize for that, but that's like the only time frame that could work for me to actually do like a three hour stream and also not conflict with work and family responsibilities. So we're gonna see how that goes for a while and um, uh, see if enough people are able to join and then I might try to adjust it later if things don't really work out at that time. But I know there's a lot of people who watch this channel who are in uh, in Europe, in Asia, the UK, etc. So I think that there's a plenty of people who should be able to make it around that time frame. But let me know if, if uh, it's overwhelmingly uh, a bad time for people. Heath says, nice chat integration. Yeah, hopefully it, it's, it continues working. I don't know how, how it's going right now. I'm trying to watch like a, a live feed of the video on the other screen. I don't see chat messages very often, so let's see. Crazy Chicken says, cool to see you use UTC. Well, whenever you have uh, a an audience that's across the world, you kind of have to use UTC because uh, if I say, oh, it's going to be at 9 a.m. and people are like, what 9 a.m.? Uh, yeah, so kind of have to be flexible on that. All right. Hello from Siberia. That's awesome. All right, so like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the uh, tab bar in Emacs today. Um, I made a video about this, I wanna say toward the beginning of this year, uh, which seems like forever ago now, but um, it was mainly talking about um, 
using tab bar in Emacs 27 and just going through sort of the basic basics of how to use it. But in the development of Emacs 28, there's been a lot of new features added and some really interesting things that I, I don't know which things got added in 28 and or were already there in 27, but I know that a lot of work has been done on tab bar mode. So I, I figured it might be interesting to go back to it today and try to uh, build an interesting configuration for it that could replace some of the things I'm already using um, uh, other packages or programs for in my Emacs configuration uh, and see what kind of hidden value we can draw out of the new changes because a lot of the stuff isn't really documented as far as I can tell I don't know if there's manual pages for it yet um, so it's kind of like you have to you have to dig in the functions and variables to figure out how to use some of this stuff but that's part of the fun so that's what we're gonna try to do today <laughs> crazy chicken says let's listen to temple os's god songs on flux harmonic I don't know that Sounds like it would be, it would make your ears bleed. Gavin says, thanks for reminding me to set a custom URL. Yeah, those are kind of necessary because otherwise the uh, YouTube channel uh, URLs, I don't know if you can see this in the bottom right hand side, it's probably covered, but they're, they're awful. In fact, I'll just, I'll copy that and paste it into the, the slide here just so you can see how ugly it is. It's terrible. Well, wow, Edge Crusher says in Australia, in Australia, it's 2:40 a.m. Yeah, uh, in the uh, what do you call that? The the lower Pacific? What, what's what? Oceania? I don't know. What, what what do you call that part of the world? Uh, it's extremely late uh, in that part of the world. It never really matches up there. A friend of mine is in New Zealand, and um, for them, it's always like yeah, so it's very strange how the time works there. I mean, it's like the next day, basically, way farther ahead. Alexander says, I'm from Siberia too. That's awesome. Good evening, cast Q3. I'm seeing the Twitch messages from Restreambot and uh, sometimes it's hard to catch them because they have Restreambot on front of it. Ah, Gavin says, I don't know why it requires a C now. Actually, it doesn't as far as I can tell because if I go to youtube.com slash system crafters, it works. So I think that that's um, the the C thing was a temporary issue, and now now they fix it. So I don't know what to say about that. Hey Eric, Asia Pacific. Okay, that that's probably the right way to call that. All right. So um, some of the things that I want to try today, uh, I want to try to customize the tab dis tab display to show selection better. Okay. So basically. Um, well, let's just turn it on. I'm gonna go to another Emacs session because since I'm back in EXWM, I don't wanna take everything down if things go wrong. So uh, I will drop, uh, let's see. Yeah, so if you want to start tab bar mode, and I guess let me r roll back a couple steps and tell you what tab bar mode is first. So um, I'm sure you've seen plenty of editors text editors that have tabs for each file that you have open tab bar mode is not that uh, there's actually a feature in emacs called tab line mode that gives you that functionality but tab bar mode is actually more like a workspace um, feature in emacs like a built-in workspace feature and basically what it does is gives you different window configurations that you can switch between so it's almost like having multiple workspaces where one workspace could have like one uh, window emacs window that's you know taking up the full screen and then the next uh, tab could have you know split windows in certain configurations and you can switch back and forth between those very easily and typically you would use this type of thing for uh, maybe you have all your irc chats in one uh, tab you have your you know various projects you're working on in their own individual tabs to keep them separated and it's a good way to um, kind of keep your workflow clean so that whenever you need to go do some other task, you can just create a new tab to have your own window configuration there without all the other clutter from the other configurations. So uh, you can use the tab bar mode uh, command with Meta X to turn that on. And interestingly, it's not actually, oh, there it goes. All right, so you can see now there's this little tab that shows up in the top right, uh, left-hand corner of the screen. And um, it just basically says what the current buffer is. So if I were to go open up another file, like let's say uh, .emacs profiles, yes. Uh, you can see now that the tab here has uh, changed to have the file name in it. Now, the, the funny thing about this is that you can't really tell that it's a different piece of UI because um, 
it's not colored in a way that stands out. So if I were to create a new tab with the tab bar, I think new tab command, um, uh, you've, we've got two tabs now and you can't really distinguish between them. Uh, whenever you select between them, you can kind of tell that the, uh, the font lights up to uh, like a slightly brighter color, but uh, it's not really hard. To, it's not really easy to tell. So I want to kind of try to customize that a little bit to make it stand out better and uh, see if we can uh, make it. Um, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. Uh, see if we can make it uh, uh, more attractive and, and sort of eye catching so you can easily tell which tab is selected. Jordan says hello from Montana. That's awesome. Uh, Gavin says, same, I didn't like tabs in Vim, but I could see the value in Emacs. Since I use Emacs for much more I, I, than I'd ever use a single Vim session. Yeah, really, you kind of need to, uh, um, with Vim, I guess you just sort of like, you know, have one thing going on at the same time because it's very minimal experience. But uh, with Emacs, yeah, you typically are doing way too many things in Emacs. Gon says, is that comparable to layouts? Um... Well, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure which layouts we're talking about, to be honest. I'm trying to adjust this position of this. I think it's cutting off text a little bit. There we go. Hello, everyone. System Crafters Rocks. Thanks, Minas Mazar. Whoops. I moved the wrong part of the screen. All right, move. Ah, come on. Chat widget. It's not easy to do with a touchpad. I'm wasting time here. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. I should have clicked it first. Boom. Okay, that should be better. Uh, Ilya says, do we have an, an after stream way of chatting? Yeah, go to uh, the links in the pinned message in the YouTube chat. Um, there's a link to systemcrappers.chat and it's got information on the wiki. Now, I, I should say, I keep getting uh, notified by people that the, uh, the wiki website for systemcrappers.net has a certificate issue. So if you go to the site there and you see that it complains about the certificate, don't be afraid, just go ahead and, and click through it. The problem is that I'm using GitHub pages for hosting that site. And uh, for some reason, just for that specific site, they're having a problem with renewing the certificate. So it's just expired right now. I need to uh, contact support and get them to fix that, but uh, eventually it'll get fixed. Gon says, uh, Space Max has space L to go to a layout like perspective grouping buffers. Interesting. Yep. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's what's happening. Don, are you also on Twitch? Yes. Twitch.tv slash system crafters. I'm streaming there right now, actually. Carmichael says, I've been using Vim plus Tmux for years and I'm currently migrating to Emacs plus Evo. Loving it so far. Uh, that's great. Yeah, Emacs is fun. I don't know. Uh, I've used Vim plus Tmux uh, for a while, and um, it's cool. I think that the advantage of it is that is you know you've got various different tools you can pull into it, and since you know Tmux is really just sort of multiplexing various terminal programs, you can use whatever terminal programs you want in there. But you do not have the level of integration between things um, in Tmux with other terminal programs as you do with uh, with Emacs. And Emacs works pretty well in the terminal and also has screen-like functionality. So I don't know. I think uh, it's it's worthwhile to use Emacs if you are a person who's been using um, Vim plus Emacs in the past. Sam says, I usually inherit Doom mode line panel to tab bar tab to stand out the current tab color. Yeah, that's basically what I was thinking about doing. So we might go ahead with your uh, suggestion there, Sam. Thank you. Uh, Felipe says Emacs own tab bar mode has control X T ret to show a list of workspaces. Uh, tab bar mode is a really dumb name for the future. Yeah, tab bar mode is very misleading as a name because the first thing you think of, like I said, is is file tabs and not something else. But I don't know. I mean, the visual metaphor here is tabs. So I guess that's why they did it. But um, it really is more like a workspace metaphor, I think. So control X return. Hello. Control X T return gives you the list of tabs. Yeah, that's right. Bernard says, uh, as far as I can tell, tab bar mode is just a way to store multiple window layouts that you can switch between, but buffers aren't isolated. Yes, that's another problem that I want to try to solve today. So let me actually go back to my uh, my notes here. So there's another feature that I want to experiment with called tab groups. I think this is something new. I have not actually tried it before, uh, but the idea is that 
you should be able to group your tabs, your workspace tabs, um, by some factor, I guess. I don't know, like you just create a new tab in the, in the current group. I'm not sure what the usefulness of that will be, but we can try it out and see where it makes sense to be used. Um, so yeah, we'll try that out. Uh, also, uh, setting the tab bar format. This is kind of interesting. Um, there's a variable called tab bar format, which uh, controls how the uh, tabs get displayed, but it actually has a kind of a secret feature, which is that in this area on the right side, you can actually display arbitrary text, including the global part of the mode line. So instead of displaying the global part of the mode line, which I don't know which parts of it right now would be considered part of that, but um, you can basically move that up here to always have it visible. So one thing I don't like about having like, let's say the, the current clock time or the battery status in the mode line is that it only gets shown on the active window a lot of times, but in theory, we can move it up here. So it's always visible and it's always in the same place. So uh, that's kind of a cool little feature that could replace the use of a panel if you're using EXWM as your window manager. So I want to try that out, see how it looks. Sam says Centaur tabs is old or at least pre-built uh, uh, built before tab bar and used to do exactly this grouping by project or by other factors. Yeah, um, it could be useful. I have not yet um, seen what that's going to look like, but we're going to find out today. Uh, what else? Whoops. Uh, let's see, open project.el projects in new tabs. I think we've covered recently a package that would allow you to do this, but I think it's actually very simple uh, to do this without any external package. So I've got a theory on this that we can try out uh, in a little while as well. Uh, writing a function to show only desired buffers for a given tab. Um, there's a few different ways to do this. I wanna try to do it in a very cheap way that doesn't require us to write our own buffer management uh, code. I think I have an idea in mind that could work for a few of the cases that I care about. So uh, that, that might be useful. And also, does it work with desktop save mode? People in the chat may already know the answer to this, but um, it'll be interesting to find out whether um, you can actually save the open set of tabs to your desktop state whenever you close Emacs, and then when you reopen it, be able to load those back up again. Uh, Gavin says, doesn't Emacs 28 also offer a global mode line header? Can't remember which it was. Mm, let's see. I don't know. Okay, tab line mode, no. I, I thought that that is what this basically does. You might be able to pull it up in a header uh, thing, but I'm not sure. Let's see, Emacs 28 global mode line. Emacs has a global mode line. What is this, five months ago? Uh, this must be similar to what I'm showing. I think this is PCAL's website. Tab, yeah, this is the same thing. Tab bar format. So basically, if you set that up, then you get basically what amounts to a uh, global mode line. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and if, in fact, you can basically abuse the tab bar feature and just throw tabs away entirely. Don't even show tabs uh, and only show that string. So that's basically what uh, Philip is showing here, which is pretty interesting. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, first of all, let's try to cu customize the tab display uh, to show a better color. And since I'm using Doom mode line uh, and Doom themes in general, I think um, that that is a good place to pull a color from because it would be nice to pull a color like maybe this one down here. I don't know if you can see where my cursor is going, but basically the leftmost part of the mode line has its own uh, color there. And Sam said before that there was one called, I think, Doom mode line panel, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see. Um, I'm going to call up uh, describe face, face, uh, doom mode line panel. Yeah, that looks right. So you can basically uh, take this color, which is a light blue with a uh, darker text on front and inherit that um, that color or the sort of basically set the face to inherit that color. So describe face, tab, bar, tab. Yeah, I think it's tab bar tab. So there's inactive, which is the one that's not currently selected, but I think tab bar tab must be the uh, currently selected one. So what we can try to do, let me go into, um, let's see, config, bear, 
config to el okay so let's do this set face attribute i think we're going to set a tab bar tab now i need to check out how to set up inheritance on this uh face frame okay so i think it's just uh inherit uh doom mode line panel the wrong argument type l l frame live p oh i gotta put in uh, nil here i think all right so it didn't do anything yet let's actually change these hmm ah we got some spammers up in the chat here let's see spam okay so let's see uh, Osmane says, uh, have, have been using L screen for a while. Is that a, is this a different use case? I'm not sure. I haven't actually used L screen. So I'm not sure exactly what the uh, use case for that one is. It might be similar though. Hi, Nicholas. Uh, Jordan says Emacs daemons plus tab bar plus perspectives plus projectile plus tree max. Um, or at least until perspectives work with tab bar. Okay. I'm guessing that's a T mux replacement. All right, so this is not working yet. Maybe I should uh, turn off tab bar mode and turn it back on again. <clears throat> okay, so that didn't work either. Let's go back and check the face list. Oh, nice. All right, uh, tab bar. Tab bar face, that's definitely not the right one. Tab bar face for selected tab. Tab bar tab, right? That's what I said. All right, so how about this? Um, uh, Emacs. Uh, inherit face. Let's see if there's a, a nice programmatic way to do that. How to incorrectly inherit from multiple faces. Custom set attributes. Yeah, you could do that. Face attributes. I need to get the zoom of this uh, text in the browser set up right. Inherit. The name of a face from which to inherit attributes or a list of face names. If face to inherit is from unspecified, it is treated the same as nil, never merges inherit attributes. Okay. That's interesting. I would have thought this would work. Let me see. I um, wonder if I do that at all in my own configuration. I can't remember. Inherit. Oh, yeah, there we go. So that's basically the same thing, right? If I were to go back to <clears throat> this, run it again, and then check uh, describe face, tab, bar, tab. Yeah, it's not doing anything, is it? Sam says custom face, uh, tab, bar, tab, T. Mm, is that uh, in use package? Doom, mode line, panel, foreground, nil, weight, demo, bold. Okay, that's basically what you're using there. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, it's actually set to inherit Doom Mode Line Panel. Okay, I, that's probably it. I need to actually remove the other parts. So let's do this. Uh, foreground, nil, background, nil. There we go. Okay. So it was really just a matter of clearing out the other uh, face attributes first. Um, so inherit and then clear out foreground and background. And now we can see that... Let's see, I think it's uh, control X T, uh, what, N? Yeah, oh no, that's new. Control X T K, I'll kill that, no. Control X T, um, so control X T zero, close the tab, and then, ah, it's control X T O to move the next tab, okay. So control X T zero, control X T uh, O. Okay, so you can see that we actually do have a nice uh, color here that uh, shows up because we're basically just in inheriting that existing um, face. So if we were to change our doom, whoops, if we, if we were to change our uh, theme, so let's say instead of doom snazzy, well, let's see, consult theme, if we were to change this to, let's say, um, Nord. Uh, this actually does change also, which is pretty cool. So let's change it again. So Pale Knight. Yeah, that, that one's not... What? Pale Knight. That one was not very interesting. Let's try that again. Yeah, okay. That does actually work whenever you reevaluate it. You, you may have to do that sometimes. 
Console theme. Let's go back to snazzy. That's, ooh, that's, that's kind of a nice theme. Okay. Ah, Don says, can you explain a little bit about faces? That's a good point. One second. Let me see if I can turn on keycast mode here. Consby, okay, it's not working. So um, if you don't know what faces are in Emacs, um, basically it's just how Emacs decides how to display text that goes on the screen. So um, what you see here is that we're actually setting foreground and background colors for this particular element on the screen. And uh, there's a lot of other things you can do, like the border around something, or maybe like a shadow, or there's all, all kinds of settings you can set. In fact, if you use the describe face command and then load up, let's say tab bar tab, it gives you a bunch of information about the different properties that you can set on a face to change how it looks. You can change the, the font face. So if you wanna use a different font, you can do that. Uh, strike through text, uh, underline. Um, I don't know what a distant foreground is, but that's something you can do. Uh, you can make it italic. Uh, you can change the width and the height of the text. So you can do a lot of things to change how text looks by setting face attributes. And the easiest way to do that is to use the set face attribute function and give it the face you want to change, the, the symbol form of the face you want to change. Uh, and also nil, usually you want to put as the um, second parameter there. And then everything after that is basically just setting the particular properties for the face that you're changing. Uh, and that typically takes place immediately. If you set the, that correctly with this function, then you'll see a change to the element uh, necessary. And also describe face with a good completion system like Vertigo or Ivy, uh, you can uh, easily figure out what faces are um, active in Emacs. So you can figure out which one you're trying to change. So let's say you wanna change, um, let's see, perspective name. Yeah, that's not really a good, a good example. Let's see, font lock, string face. So if you wanna change like how text is highlighted, uh, you can change some of these faces. Uh, let's see, the default face uh, controls the, the background color and the main text color in Emacs. That's another thing you can change if you wanted to try to uh, tweak things individually. So it gives you a way to um, change the uh, display attributes of certain things that show up in um, Emacs if you wanna do that. Uh, so that's what, basically what we're doing here is we're just changing how tabs look. Gavin says you should clip this and make it into a short. That's a great idea, actually. I need to be doing more of that. Um, so yeah, I think uh, eventually I need to make a video on faces and it's probably something I'll get into this year when I'm talking about um, basically learning how to configure Emacs from scratch, but not with external packages. So we just try to like write Emacs Lisp. So we'll, we'll cover it then, I think. Okay, uh, Gan says, are these buffer specific variables? I don't think faces are buffer specific, but it seems that they can be frame specific. So you might be able to change the face of something in the current frame only and not in all frames. So if you go to the, do the documentation of uh, set face attribute, uh, it says that frame is a second parameter. If frame is nil, set the attributes for all existing frames, as well as the default for new frames. If frame is T, change the default for new frames only. I would guess you could pass an actual frame in there also, but um, it seems it gives you some f flexibility if you don't want to affect your current frame, but you only want to affect new frames after that. Gon says, what about syntax highlighting? Um, well, that's what all those, uh, if you run describe face again, if you look at uh, font dash lock dash, then you see all of the faces that are used for Emacs built-in font locking system, which is basically how syntax highlighting works. Um, so that, that allows you to change the colors, but to actually affect how syntax for a particular language is highlighted, you would have to go edit the package that defines the syntax, uh, grammar basically for the language. And it's not really a grammar per se. It's more like just a bunch of re regular expressions that know how to identify various elements in the syntax. Um, you've heard a lot of people probably talk about tree sitter, which is a different thing entirely, which actually knows how to parse the actual syntax tree of a particular language and highlight it more effectively, but that, that, that does not come in Emacs yet. So uh, not something that you can use without installing a package. Hey, Anders. Duncan says, I wrote a syntax highlighting package for a Monte Car Carlo input format in a weekend, learned all about faces and font lock. Uh, yeah, I've tried writing a syntax definition, um, basically try to copy some existing stuff to make it work. Um, I think to do a good job at that, it would take a lot of effort, but 
um, it's definitely one of those areas of Emacs that if you dive deeply into it, you probably could do some really cool stuff. <clears throat> Felipe says, I've been using tab bar mode with tab bar show set to nil. A visual tab bar by default has scared the, the few Emacs users I've shown the feature to uh, while having named window configurations just clicks. Yeah, that's definitely another thing that you can keep in mind. If you don't want to see these tabs, um, I believe tab bar show is a variable you can set to nil if you don't want to show it, and then it just won't show up at all. Um, let's see. Is there any extra stuff you can uh, set here? If T default uh, is... If T, enable tab bar mode automatically when using... See, this is actually not 100% what you think it's supposed to be, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, show it automatically upon using the commands to create new window configurations. If a non-negative integer, show the tab bar only if the number of tabs exceeds the value of this variable, which is kind of nice if you don't have multiple tabs in most of your frames. Uh, it doesn't show the bar. Uh, let's see, and show it again once more tabs are created. A value that is a non-negative integer also makes the tab bar appearance be different on different frames. That's useful in my opinion. Uh, the tab bar can be shown on some frames and hidden on others depending on how many tab bar tabs are on that frame and whether that number is greater than the numerical value of this variable. If nil, always keep it hidden. In this case, it's still possible to use persistent named window configurations by relying on the keyboard commands. Um, I think also, uh, with Doom mode line, you can have the name of the current tab show up in the mode line as well. So you, you can see which uh, window config you're currently in without having to um, show the tab bar if you don't want to do that. So that's a good point to, to, to make there, Felipe. Thank you. Let's see. Elia asked something. Stump WM mode. Yeah. Hey, Noble and Savage. Okay, so let's jump back into it. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to make this con this uh, configuration we work on today available in the show notes uh, at the end of the stream in case you want to play around with it also. Uh, so maybe we'll just uh, do this as well. So set Q uh, tab bar show. I want to set that to uh, two because I don't want to see the tab bar unless there's two tabs. So I'll evaluate that. Uh, only show the tab bar if there are two or more tabs. Um, inherit the face of uh, Doom mode line panel for better appearance. Maybe I should uh, play around with that a little bit more too. There's there's another thing we can talk about there. So now, if I were to close this first tab here, uh, let's see, Control X T O then the tab list goes away, as you can see. But if I were to use the um, control XTN to create a new tab, oh, did it not work? What's happening here? There we go, oh, okay. I think that it has to be greater than that number. So maybe it actually needs to be set to uh, one instead. So I will go ahead and kill that and that. And then I'm going to go back to config.el. I'll set this to one because that's actually what I want it to be. All right. So now if I were to use control X T N, it will create a new tab. If I were to use control X T zero to kill that tab, then it will hide the tab bar again. So um, if you're using EXWM, this could be really helpful because on some of your EXWM workspaces, which are their own individual frames, maybe you don't have any tabs set up there and you don't want to see the tab line, but on the particular uh, workspace where uh, EX, EXWM workspace where you have multiple tabs, you actually do want to see the tab line. So that actually could be pretty useful there. Uh, Tomas says, I wonder if you can set a face by the name of the face. That would simplify figuring out a good attribute combinations for a face. That's possible. Uh, Tomas says, uh, by default, you can set certain face attributes on arbitrary text in a buffer. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what's K say? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, Case was basically saying the same thing that I had to, to figure out uh, whenever I was just stumbling around. That's what meta O is for. Yeah, I... Uh, hold on a second. Meta O is undefined. Maybe that's because of uh, Vim or evil mode. Uh, control HK meta... Ah, oh, come on. All right, what happened here? Control... 
Control H K. Come on. Control G. Get me out. Control H K meta O. Undefined on my on my uh, system here. Get that K out of there. Noble says, I have a dream. I make a config that makes Emacs look like VS Code just to shock the button clickers. Well, um, people have done that. You should uh, take a look on Reddit. I think there's a few posts about it. Uh, Gon says, YouTube teaser says, a tab bar feature in Emacs 28. Yeah, it is in 27, but there's new things added in 28. All right, so uh, another thing, there's a few other things that are interesting about uh, the display of tabs. In fact, let me set this back to uh, zero so we can see it all the time. And then we're gonna go look at the tab bar format. That's not right. I think it's the tab name format function. So there's actually um, a lot of configuration capability here to change the way that tabs are displayed. So uh, tab bar tab name format default is the, the default function for this, not documented. Um, there's a lot of code in here actually, uh, which, okay, actually it's just this part here. So we're propertizing a string if tab bar tab hints, a list get, okay, so we have the tab information as probably the index of the tab, the, uh, the I variable there tab bar okay so you can basically override everything about how a uh, tab bar tab is displayed so let's see if we could do that really quickly i'm going to close that window out i'm going to go back to let's say uh, control xt in let's just get a new tab here go back to config.el um the define uh let's see uh my slash uh, tab bar format and we need to take in a tab and an I. And then, let's see, what else do they do in there? Is it just returning text, it seems? Propertize text. So we can go just, you know, bare minimum. We can grab the tab name with a list get and just return that if we wanted to. I really need to get Lispy up in here. All right, so I can eval that. And then I can also, um, Use set Q and what was the, man, I keep trying to hit my own personal key bindings and it doesn't work here. Uh, tab bar tab name format function. Let me grab this. Um, let's see. All right, ah, once again, hitting the wrong keys. I need to put my custom, geez. I need to put my custom key bindings in here. All right, so uh, tab format function. I'm gonna set this to my whoops my slash tab bar format. Format. I'll eval that, and now all of a sudden, um, the text seems to have disappeared. But it hasn't actually disappeared. You just can't see it because it hasn't been propertized correctly. Uh, Andre says rainbow tab colors. Yeah, that's possible. Hey, hey, uh, fade. All right, so um, to make it visible, we need to actually show something uh, or you know make it propertized so that it shows up correctly. So I think what we can use is this propertize, propertize fun why is this not working? Jeez, uh, propertize function. So if you don't know about propertize, it's actually a way to uh, take a string and set uh, face properties on it. And in this case, I think what we're gonna do is Oh, tab bar, tab face function. So that's actually interesting too. There's another way to just customize only getting the face of the tab. So we could change that too and not use the previous method we were using. But let's try this first. So we're gonna propertize the string. So we're gonna take the name here. We're gonna use propertize. And then just take the string. We're gonna say face here. I think that's the right way to do that. And can I just give it Doom mode line panel directly. I don't recommend doing it this way because it's a little bit weird, but it is possible. All right, so does it does it work? That's the, the biggest question. Okay, yeah, that worked. So by default, it's 
setting the property, the prop, the text properties of. Sorry, I'm hearing noises. That was weird. Anyway, it's setting the text properties of um, the tabs to whatever we put into Propertize here. Uh, and as you can see, both of them seem to be highlighted. So that function that we saw before must actually have something to, to see whether it's, uh, uh, I guess it must be the tab bar tab face function. So if we were to look at the, doc the documentation or the definition of that tab bar tab face function, um, this tab bar tab face default, tab bar tab face default. And uh, it's basically just a little bit of an if statement that says if it's the current tab, return tab bar tab, otherwise turn return tab bar inactive. So uh, you, you would have the ability to set rainbow tab colors as Andre suggested by uh, customizing this tab bar tab face function and just returning whatever face you wanted. I don't know if there's a way to randomly pick a face in, in Emacs, but if you wanted to get really weird, you could uh, certainly have a function that just returns a random face and then your, uh, your tabs look really weird. Uh, I'm not gonna try that right now because too much work. <laughs> Hey, Mjolnir. Okay, so that was all nice and fun, but we don't really need to do things that way. Um, because, well, okay, I guess really the other thing that would be useful here is uh, setting other stuff on it. So let's say format. Uh, let's see. I think it formats right, isn't it? That's a function. Format, string, rest, objects. Okay. Uh, what is the syntax for that? I always forget. Ah, uh, that's it. So percent %s, I can do this. I can put whatever text in here I want to make it have like, let's say a little um, arrow in front, control X, control E, and then it gets added to that because every time this function gets called to redisplay the tabs, you have this uh, little uh, thing there. So if you wanted to use that as part of what gets displayed when a tab is selected, you could do it. In fact, if we go back and look at this, uh, let me actually just grab this little piece of code here. So I can say, hmm, let's just build this up uh, progressively. Concat, here I can say uh, if, and then drop that logic in. And then uh, if it's true, I'm gonna say a little arrow there with a percent %s. Nah, I don't have to do that. Let's do it like this. Otherwise return an empty string. Okay, and then I'll say percent %s here. And that should close out the concat. Now, if I were to delete that piece and drop it right here, I won't let me format. That's lame. Let's see. Let's take that part out. I'll put that there, indent that a little bit, indent that a little bit. I really need to get... Uh, indentation working correctly here. Okay, so that format should work. So now if I eval that, um, yeah, only the selected one gets it. Oh, I need to add an extra space in. Okay, so now the selected tab has the little uh, greater than symbol in front and the, uh, the non-selected tab does not. So that's one way you could set that. Uh, Karthik says, I like to put a box around the active tab name. That's actually a good idea. So what if we do Let's see, with proper ties, can I just set the properties directly? Let's ch take a look at the, let me get this out of the way here. Proper ties functionality, look at the text properties documentation. So it's just properties, right? I could do that. So if instead of using doom mode line panel, um, let's pull up special properties, format properties, okay. I'm pressing enter. Why aren't you letting me go to that? There we go. No, that's not the one. Examining properties, property search. Probably not the right place. Oh, nah. Gon says, might as well cram some of the mode line icons into the tab. That is uh, something I want to try in a second. Whoa, that's not what I'm looking for. Hey, right, let's go back to this page because that one actually had what I was looking for. So box, was it like box or something? Whether a box should be drawn around the characters. Uh, T, draw a box with lines of width one. Let's try that real quick. 
So I want to do um, foreground. Let's just make it white. Whoops. Right, and that's uh, the hex code for white. And also box, was it T? Yeah, let's just put box T. Let's see if this works. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, no, it must have crashed it somehow. So maybe I should take the face out. Obviously, my propertized foo is uh, failing me right now. I've used this before somewhere. Karthik, if you remember the right uh, syntax for propertized to make the property show up, then that would be helpful. Okay, let me see. There's a way to set the line width and the color if you want to. Up faces. Attribute functions. It's propertizing here. No. I mean, I'm already here, I guess. Text properties for more information. Changing properties. Format properties. Come on. Yeah, I, I looked at that one before. It didn't work. Changing properties. Put property text. Add text properties. Propertize. Here we go. Propertize foo face italic mouse face. Oh, is that what it is? You do it this way? So far, it's not showing me anything. Hmm. Let me show up in messages saying that I made a huge mistake. Not complaining, is it? So let's just drop this back to the default, just in case. Hey, Simon. So that was um, tab bar, uh, tab name, format, default. Tab bar, tab name, format, default. Tab bar mode, disabled, enabled. Okay, so maybe I just broke something before. Let's try this again. Okay. That did not work, but maybe if I were to put this back, it would work. It's something I did, it did not like. Definitely doing something wrong. The different properties in different parts of a string. You can construct a part with properties. Base italic. Ah, you know what? Is that what it is? Base, and then you gotta put like the whole P list afterward. Come on, stop. Let's restart the tab armor just in case. No, didn't work. We're not going to rat hole in this very much longer. Sometimes you have to wrap it twice. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So that worked. So now I can actually check whether. Let's see. Hmm. Is it pinned? Sequences. Okay. So concatenate all the arguments and make the result a list. That's sequences, right? So I can just use a append here. I can start with that. And here I can uh, use the same if logic as I used here before. I know this is not really the, the right way to do this, but you know, we're just doing it as a, as an exercise. Better to, to change the face format function. But uh, let's see. So if uh, equal car tab then we want to return a list containing box T. Otherwise, we're just gonna return an empty list so that we'll just append nothing at the end. Make sure we got the right stuff here. There we go, there we go. I think it needs to be, um, oh, hold on. So let's do that. I think we need an outer list as well. So this just appends these two, but I also need to have it be wrapped in a list. 
All right, let's make sure that we're matching things up correctly. List, so that append is not lining up. Append, if, append, okay, that's right. List, okay, that looks good. Terrible indentation, awful, okay. So now, um, ah, it seems to work. So if I were to, to select, let's see, control X, T, O, yeah, so now we get an, an outline and a little arrow at the, at the beginning of the string. So you have full control over how that looks, which is kind of nice. Uh, Tomas says, just put the if around the value of the box. Yeah, that, that also is definitely something I can do there. So let's move on from that because that was fun, but uh, you know that's not really what we're here for. Uh, let's see. Uh, totally customize the format of the tab bar uh, name. Replace the default tab bar function. Did I just mute the audio? Yes, I did. Alrighty. So next thing, let me actually go check my list of stuff that I wanted to try. I think I wanted to try uh, tab bar groups. Oh, emojis. Let me try putting an emoji in there really quickly. Just for fun, real fast. Um, there's some new ability to um, display emoji selections, I think. Is that right? wrong Emacs let's go he oh, no Emacs that one so is there a command for this I don't want to use emojify I want to use whatever is built into Emacs for anybody remembers that key binding for uh, displaying the emojis that would be helpful I don't know if it actually um, it was something that is built in or if Lars just says that someone had worked on it and it's not actually merged yet uh, but you know what here we go um, hmm fire emoji let's just copy and paste it and see if it works uh if i think i mentioned this maybe last week or the week before last but uh, emacs now has the ability in emacs 28 to display emoji characters correctly which it didn't actually or color emoji characters correctly which it did not have in the past um if you can believe it but now you can see i actually just pasted in that fire emoji and it did show up correctly so i'll reavow that function and i will uh reavow this function as well and now you can see i actually have an, emo an emoji here so you can put whatever you want in the format um so that's kind of cool you can have a fire emoji as your selected icon control x 8 e control x 8 e yeah it's undefined for me i wonder if the build of emacs i have doesn't actually have it sam says i think it's emacs 29 yeah you're probably right cx8 return ah that looks right So they have the, the imp emoji. Okay, there you go. So that's control X eight return. And it uh, doesn't seem to allow me to search all of them effectively, but that may just be a matter of, oh, it doesn't show all of them, but that's probably just a matter of my uh, my font not having everything. So uh, praying hands, can I look for that? Prayer beads, PR hands, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Pray hands. Uh, there's your handshake. Ah, oh, there we go. Person with folded hands. There's a praying hands emoji. Okay. Anyway, that, that was all we needed to say about that. So tab groups. Let's try that out really quickly. Uh, K says I use Control X eight return all the dang time. It's great. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting that it exists. Okay. So. Let's move on to tab groups. So let's see, tab bar group. So let's see, move tab to group, change tab group. So what if I run tab bar, change tab group? Group name for tab. Um, I don't know, config. What's it doing? Nothing. So I don't know. Let's look at uh, Control X T and then use Control H to pull up the the um, commands in that prefix. T tab group. So Control Control X T capital G Control X T capital G gives you group name for tab. So what if I go and create a new tab? Control X T N. 
And then I call this uh, Control X T Capital G um, uh, another very very uh, great naming here. Can't really tell what the group name is by looking at this, but let's see. Um, so tab group. Okay, tab group, tab close group, tab bar close group tabs, move tab to group, change tab group. So if I go to another, all right, I need to change which buffer I'm looking at here because obviously this is not helping. We'll go to the messages buffer here. Um, we'll go to the, let's see, emacsprofiles.el there. So if I look at tab bar group as a variable name, doesn't actually tell me anything. Tab bar group function, that's something we should look at in a little bit. Um, so if I were to use that function again, uh, tab bar change tab group, I choose another, tab bar change tab group, another, okay, I don't know what's going on here. Let's try this again. What about, because I think that one of them was supposed to be called something else. Leave blank to remove group. Okay, so I remove the group there. Um, so far, I'm not exactly sure what value they have aside. Okay, control X, T, N, clones a tab. It doesn't make a new one. Okay, that makes sense. Control X, T, um, tab new is control X, T, 2. Control X, T, 2. And we'll open up the uh, info buffer on that one. So if I were to use tab group close group, close all tabs of group name another, that does allow you to easily close all of them of the same group, but um, is there a way to switch between ones of the current group? Tab, whoops. Tab group, change tab group. Add the tab specified by its absolute position to tab number or to group name. Um, close all tabs, relocate tab closer to its group. That's a way you can gather them together, I guess, which is kind of nice. So let's say control X T two, control X T two, control X T two. All right. So here I've got that window config. Um, this one I'm going to say, let's call it another. That's fine. Let's go to another tab here. Let's go to another buffer here. Another buffer here. So I think these two are another. Let's make this one another, I guess. And this one should be nothing. So what if I run um, tab bar group, move tab bar to group. What's it doing? Nothing. Okay, let's uh, maybe move to this tab and try that again. Doesn't do anything. How about this one? Yeah. I'm not sure it's actually doing what I think it's supposed to be doing anyway. So far, I'm not convinced about that particular thing. I don't know if it's just like a matter of me not figuring out the right uh, usage pattern for it, but so far, why is all X not working? Tab bar group, change tab group, close group tabs. I mean, that thing actually did work. So yeah, I don't know what's happening. Or maybe it did work and I just didn't notice it. But uh, yeah, tab groups could be useful. Maybe we can figure it out um, in the chat at some point. <laughs> Christian says, I hope it's still ugly and didn't miss the cool stuff. Yeah, we're, you know, we're still working on it. Let's see. Samuel Jackson says, is there a way to set new tabs to prompt for a name before being created? I really, really dislike auto named tabs. Hmm, good question. Let's see. There's a lot of fun stuff hiding in um, tab bar. So if you actually uh, look for any variable named tab bar function the, with those you know words in the name, there's a lot of stuff in here for customization. So something like uh, post open functions, uh, tab bar and tab name function, which we already did customize before. Oh wait, so the tab format is one thing. The tab bar tab name function is a different thing entirely. So the choice between displaying only the name of the current buffer in the tab name or displaying the names of all buffers from all, wi whoa, all windows. So tab bar, 
tab name current generate tab name from the buffer of the selected window i wonder if this is um called dynamically or if it's something that's called only whenever it's first open jordan says you can rename tabs yes that's definitely the case but i wonder about uh being able to control the naming as they get created tab bar function let's see tab group format function prevent close function that's actually interesting you can make sure that you don't close any tabs that you don't want to there's also i guess post change group functions wouldn't that just be a hook unless it filters somehow so uh let's see what was it tab name function let's see let's change that really quickly and see what happens i'm curious so set queue tab bar tab name function Let's just give it a Lambda. Uh, what does it expect? Okay, so it just doesn't take any parameters. So foo, we're just gonna make every new tab called foo. Now, what I'm curious about is whether when I run this, okay, so it did make this tab called foo. So it just makes everything the same name, whatever this thing gets returned. So that cannot be used for the new, um, tabs that show up apparently but if we look at the buffer name window buffer tab name current i wonder how it works when you rename one so let's look at rename tab bar rename tab tab name fun call tab bar tabs function tab to rename that's a lot of code in there explicit rename Tab explicit name. What does it do in the end? Tab new name. Oh, it's using set F. Okay. So tab to rename, tab new name. So it just sets the, the A list value. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'm guessing, okay, so uh, tab bar tab name function can be anything and it updates dynamically. I set it to the project name. That's actually a good idea. So um, let's see, Pro oops, hold on a second. Project, how do you get the project name? I guess maybe it's a function project name. Let's see. Project current, return the project instance in directory, defaulting to default directory. And what do you get when you call project current? Is return like an A list? Getting the current project name, project root of project current. Thanks, Karthik. Project root, uh, project current. Probably not gonna give me anything here because uh, project current is nil because I'm not in a project currently uh, and is in the other buffer either. So it is possible to do uh, stuff like that for sure. So in fact, if you wanted to, let's actually do this because that might be really useful for the one of the next things I want to do. So um, how about that? What we'll do is we're going to define a function. So uh, define uh my what is it my um tab bar tab name function and doesn't really take anything and what i'm going to do here is uh use a let to get the project project current there's probably a better function i can use for this but this is what i'm going to use for now and then uh if project I want to return a project root of a project. Let me indent this properly. Otherwise, I'm going to call, um, what's it called? Tab bar current. Is that right? Oh, I'm in project.el right now. Tab bar.el. Let's see, what's it called? Uh, tab name function go back to where the default set tab bar tab name current 
So we're going to call that function instead. So I'll put it right here. Close if, close let, close that. And now on this function, I'll set that here to uh, my tab bar tab name function. Evaluate that. Okay, so now that gets set back to the right thing. And But what if I create a new tab, uh, control X uh, T2, right? And I use control X P F to select a project. Okay, well, let's actually go um, projects, code, Emacs from scratch. Uh, and now you can see that the project root actually shows up here automatically because, oh, is it for, because it's DRED? Let's, uh, let's check that really quick. Because I could be saying the wrong thing. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So it is, it has, it is actually pulling the, the project root. So, um, what if I instead control X T O, what if I instead say, what is it? Um, file non directory, no directory. There's a function I can use. <clears throat> File name of the directory named directory. Is it directory file name? Directory file name. Let's see if that works. Uh, okay, didn't seem to work. Function named file directory file name directory. Yeah, they, they all get switched around file name directory. Because basically, I just want to get the name of the folder where the project is uh, stored. Still doesn't seem to be doing anything. Tab bar mode, tab bar mode. Okay. Eh, okay. I'm probably doing something stupid here. Let's see what they're saying in the chat. Getting the project name, um, if let. Yeah, if let is what I was thinking. Proj, current project, project root, default directory. Okay. <laughs> uh, Gon says, I suggest a short on all the strange Lisp symbol sigils, like the earmuffs, colons. Yeah, um, all those things definitely don't make a whole lot of sense if you haven't studied them before. Eric says, I've got an issue with Emacs Daemon. I run the daemon without starting a GUI session. My Emacs doesn't load evil or my theme. Um, you must have a hook set up somewhere that's only pulling in stuff uh, whenever the uh, UI starts up. Minas Mazar says, does anyone know about issues with tab bar and Mac OS? I'm struggling, but I can't see any bar. I don't know. I thought I heard about an issue with that that got fixed in, in newer builds. Um, let's see, explicit name, a list value sounds good for this. Maybe. Hey, Slalom Skater. Trigger the tab updating itself by visiting a file. Yeah, I think um, it's supposed to do it automatically. Let's see. Uh, demo. Yeah, I think it, I think it updates sort of periodically on its own. Sam says, I wish we just had base name and dear name. I always get confused on how to get the base directories or, or directory names. Yeah, me too, for sure. File name directory. Uh, return the directory component and file name, file name. Um, yeah, probably. Come on, there's gotta be another function for that. File dash name base. That must be it, right? No? Not it, huh? Up. Oh. Okay, so it did something. That's good. File dash name. We won't spend much more time on this. Uh, give me things to start with file name. Thank you. File name as directory. Return a string representing the file name. F oh, no, don't want that. That is weird. I swear there's a way to get this. I don't want to have to split this though. The base, the file name, no directory, no extension. Okay, that's definitely not the right way to do it then. Absolute P completion. 
non-special. It doesn't tell me anything. Ah, whatever. Okay, let's just leave it this way, the way it was before. Because it's still useful enough to see the, the folder path, I think. All right. So. Next thing. What do we want to do next? Let me check the... Uh, the set of tasks that I had set up for this. Let's see, SC, all right, there we go. So setting the tab bar format, a better status panel. We should definitely check that out because I think that's a pretty cool feature of this whole thing that um, has not really been advertised so well. So let's uh, take a look at the variable tab, whoops, tarb, tab bar format. So this is a, whoops, I'm in the wrong session. Here we go tab bar format. Okay. So uh, template for displaying tab bar items. Every item in the list is a function that returns a string or a list of menu item elements or nil. I don't know what menu item elements means. Adding a function to the list causes the tab bar to show that string or display a tab button, which when clicked will invoke the command that is binding is the binding of the menu item. Okay, that makes sense. So basically it's a button that you can click that runs uh, a command. Um, if a function returns nil, doesn't directly affect the tab bar appearance, uh, but can do that by some side effect. Okay. If the tab, if the list ends with tab bar format align right and tab bar format global, which are the two key elements here, um, then you will get the global mode string showing up um, in there. So let's take the initial value of this. Oh, come on. All right. So I'm going to copy that, go back to our config. I'm going to drop this in. I'm going to say set Q tab bar format. And now I'm going to uh, add, what was it telling me? I need to add a uh, tab bar format align right, tab bar format align right, and also tab bar format global. If I execute that. It tells me that if I go turn on uh, display time mode, then it should start showing up in the, um, the tab lines. Control X T N. Control X T N. Oops, that's not the right one. Zero zero. All right. So so far, it's not actually doing what I expect. Let's see. Let's check the variable. So I do have a line right and tab bar format global in the list. Let's see. Let's check global mode string. Okay, so there is something in there. It has display time string. If I check the variable for that, it tells me that there is a time. Hey, Benoit. Sam says you were looking for file name non-directory. I think it's not that part. I think it gives you only the uh, file name bit. Okay, so let's see. Should I, maybe I should make this an actual list instead. I think that's probably the problem. Oh, backtrace, nope, doesn't like that. Void variable tab bar, oh, okay, yeah, of course. Let's do this again then. All right. Hmm, if we take out the align right, I wonder what it does. How about um, make my own function, define my, well, yeah, let's see my uh, tab bar string. I'm getting some feedback from Mike here, apparently. Okay, so that's just a string uh, function that returns a string. I'm gonna put it right here, my slash tab bar string. I'm thinking that it's supposed to just take the Mode line refresh. Is there a function for that? Mode line. No. Here, let's check that again. We'll display time aligned to the right of the on the tab bar instead of the mode line, replacing tab bar format tabs with tab bar tab bar. Oh, so apparently to get the grouping to look right on the uh, tab bar, 
you have to actually replace tab bar format tabs with tab bar format tabs groups for it to show up right. That makes a lot of sense. That shows why we didn't actually see anything for that before. Okay, so let me think about this for a second. This should be working based on what it, it told me because tab bar format global is a function. Produce the display of global mode string. Let me actually just execute that. What are you doing? Okay, so yeah, it gives me global menu item help echo. Oh. System load average. It's got a lot of stuff in there. How about this? Let's take out the uh, tab bar format add tab because I really don't care about that. I don't want to see that button there. So I just take that out and evaluate it. So it, it did update that. That icon went away. So something is missing to make that show up correctly. <laughs> Case says, I, I sure am glad Emacs isn't complex. Oh my goodness. I got some uh, wire problems here. Okay, so let me see why this is not working. Is it because I took that other part out? It can't be. Maybe I'm not following the convention correctly. Tab bar separator. Let me check what the, this function has in it. It's a native compile list function. Okay, so or tab bar separator if window system. So is that a variable? String that delimits tabs. Okay, so that's not actually set right now. If window system, make it empty, otherwise a, a pipe character. Benoit says it's simple, not easy. Well, it's neither of those two things right now, apparently. Tab bar form format global. Let me jump into this really quickly. Okay, so it, does it need to be a list? Is that what's happening? I think it needs to follow the mode line format. So maybe that's, I need to look at that really quick. So uh, Emacs mode line format, because I don't remember the actual way to do that. Sorry, Case. I know that you didn't need another thing to uh, rat hole on while you're supposed to be working. Okay, so mode line variables, putting information to the mode line. Uh, no, that's not helpful. Uh, Properties in mode, uh, using properties in the mode line. Okay, that does not help. Mode line variables. Okay, that's that's more useful. So you can have, okay, let's try this. I'm just gonna put an arbitrary string in. How about, uh, so what is what is history? Have our format history, produce back and forward buttons. Interesting, I don't even see those. Let's just take that out because I don't like that anyway. Let's do this. Control XT uh, O. Control XT O does not show up. Why not? There's got to be a reason why this is not doing what I expect it to. What if I do um, another list? Nothing, huh? Let's toggle tab bar mode. Doesn't do anything. Case says, my one beef with Emacs is how uh, everything tries to insert themselves in the mode line, which means I have to fix things. Yeah. yeah. That's why I like to just turn a whole lot of stuff off in the mode line, because uh, it just gets too busy down there. All right, let's check this, because something's wrong. Every item in the list is a function that returns a string or a list of menu item elements or nil. And it seems, if I'm not mistaken, that this is just a list of symbols. So I'm not sure why it's not, um, it's not obeying. Can't spend too much more time on this, but let's see. Okay, so it did something there. I think, okay, the problem is that the uh, face is not set up so that it's visible. So hello is there. Let's see what's here. Okay, so the clock is actually there. You just can't read it. Let's check the uh, tab bar face. Maybe Doom Mode Line is working against us here. 
And we may be able to fix this by setting a face attribute. Um, let's see. Make sure uh, mode line text in the tab bar can be read. Let's move this down here, actually. So now I know that that's, it's there. Customize the tab bar format to add the global mode line string. All right, so here I wanna use, I think it's just tab bar. So I use describe face, tab bar. Yeah, tab bar face. And as you can see here, the text is not legible because they do that on purpose to um, hide it basically, which you know by default makes sense. But if you're trying to do this, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so we're gonna set the text attribute of tab bar. Uh, we're not gonna inherit it. We're going to just set the foreground to, well, let's just call it white, that's fine. It's, just, it's easy to write F, 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 F uh, without um, messing it up. So now that I did that, you can actually see that the text shows up correctly. So I wonder if I just broke how the, the other text will be rendered, but maybe it's not a problem. So now I can take this out and I can also um, add that, what was it? Let's see, tab bar format, let's check the variable for that. I wanna add back this um, tab bar format align right. Tab bar format align right, eval again. And now that gets moved over to the right hand side. So basically anything that would show up in the global section of the mode line now will show up here, which is cool because you get the clock, you get, I think this is like a CPU usage indicator. What about display battery mode? Um, I think Doom Mode Line is snarfing that one up. Um, I don't know if it goes in the uh, global section or if it's somewhere else. Let's see. Uh, but you can put whatever you want in there. So if we were to look at the global mode string. So uh, let's see. Display battery. Let's see. If, if I can get the battery string, battery string, battery mode line string, string display in the mode line. Hold on a second. Display battery station echo area, display battery mode. Okay, display, no. Battery string. So who sets this? Okay. Display battery mode. I wonder if uh, Doom is doing something to change how this works. I really don't feel like digging in uh, Doom's code right now. Toggle battery status display. Uh, battery mode line format battery status function. Okay, so what about uh, bat battery? Come on, battery status function. Um, oh, it's a variable. Okay. Battery U power. How about that? Battery U power. Okay, so there's a lot of data there that I would have to parse. See you, Sam. Okay, so... Battery status function. I'm not going to screw with this very much. Oh, okay, so if you, if you run it through, um, battery... Uh, let's see. Battery update. Battery update. You have better update battery status in the mode line. Okay, so let's call that really quickly. Ah, uh, can I put that there? That returns a propertized string. Hmm. And that sets what? An if, an if, battery update. Okay, so this will then, it's battery, no, it doesn't even set that string. That's really weird. I, I, I wanna get that battery information up here for sure. Maybe I can just do that. So how about I add something to the global mode string. I can append to that. 
I wonder if this is gonna work. We're gonna find out. So um, add to list, uh, what's the syntax for that? Is that a list variable, um, global mode string? I think I need to use this as a symbol, but let's let's find out first. So we're gonna add the result of, uh, oh no, we need to add the actual function, battery update, how about that? Yeah, okay, I need to make this a symbol, I think. Uh, it added it to the beginning, that's fine. So, does it update? I don't see it doing anything. Yeah, I don't see it doing anything, okay. I wonder, hmm. More spam, how about that? Oh my goodness, look at all these spammers. Sorry, I gotta clean up some stuff here. Okay. So, uh, next thing. Batteries. It must actually be doing something like that. Well, anyway, the point being that you could put whatever strings you want in here. In fact, if I were to go and add just like another string of whatever, it should show up. Yeah, it does show up. So it really is just a matter of um, having functions that can return text that could be shown in the mode line. Uh, that could also be shown here as well if you put that in global mode string. And you could also just make your own function return whatever text you wanted. So if you wanted to have your own custom uh, status area up here in the top uh, right hand corner of the screen while the tab bar is being displayed then you can do whatever you want with that and like uh, Phillips post showed do I still have that yeah right here I'll put that in the show notes because that's pretty useful uh, you can even if you don't use the actual tabs for window configurations you can use this as a global uh, mode line um, let's see using tab bar uh, solely as a global mode line, which I think is a pretty cool uh, way to use it. Okay, so uh, next, opening project.el projects in new tabs. This one's gonna be pretty easy. I think I have the right approach figured out for that. So uh, let's close this up really quick. Um, so if you use, uh, I think it's control X, uh, PF, control X, PF, it will allow you to select a project. Um, and I think that basically pulls from known projects you've opened before. I'm surprised it doesn't actually show the Emacs from scratch project right now. Uh, but typically a project is, is a folder that has um, a Git repository, partic uh, particularly, let's see, project directory. I wonder if there's a way to give it a default list. So project list.el, let's actually open up this file and see what it has in it. And nothing, okay. So um, it doesn't know about any projects right now, but I wonder if, uh, <laughs> if it just hasn't saved it yet. Anyway, point being, uh, whenever you use that command, you can easily jump back to a previous project you've worked on in the past, basically just by selecting the Git repository uh, out of a list of suggestions. And whenever you select one of those, uh, usually pro project.el is the built-in project system in Emacs. It will prompt you for an action it takes. So it would be nice if it let me actually see control X P F. Um, oh, choose a directory. So I'm going to choose uh, projects code Emacs from scratch. And um, I think by default, it just asks me for what file I want to open. So I'm just gonna say demo.el. Whoa, I'm in the wrong, uh, wrong session. That's why. Okay. So let's close that down. Drill XPF, choose a directory, um, projects, code, Emacs from scratch. I'll pick the init.el file from that. Uh, now we're in that 
uh, project, but what actually happened is it just opened that file in this current uh, tab. But what I want to do is make it automatically open a new tab by default. Uh, so there is a variable called uh, project um, find functions. I th no, that's not, that's not the one. What was it called? There's a function for this. Oh, is it, is it the prefix map? Is that what it was? There's something that you can use to do this. And I found it the other day. Project. Special hook to find the project containing a given directory. Yeah, we don't need that one. Oh, all right, that's it. Project switch commands. So each element is of the form command label key, where command is the command to run when key is pressed, label is used to distinguish the menu entries in the dispatch menu. Um, I think that you could set this to a function. Ah, the value can also be a symbol, the name of the command to be invoked immediately without any dispatch menu. So I think what we can do is create our own uh, command, we go back to config.el, uh, define uh, my uh, project create tab, and then make this an interactive function. And then uh, whenever a uh, project, let's see, when a project is created, I wonder if this is going to work the right way. Let's try it out and see what happens. So um, tab bar, what was it? Tab bar, new tab, new tab. There's another way to do this too, which we can talk about in a minute. That's sort of more built into Emacs, but uh, let's try this first and see what happens. So my project create tab. Um, and then also, let's see, do I have magic? set up here okay so you can also say like magic status just pull up the magic status for what whatever that project is so i'm going to eval that function and then i'm going to set q project switch commands to the symbol of my slash project create tab now i can use uh, control uh, x p f select that enix from scratch still doing the same thing which is interesting I wonder what I've done wrong. I noticed that it didn't do what it's supposed to, uh, which is to show this dispatch menu, which is interesting. If key is absent, command must be bound in project prefix map used by project. Okay, is that what I'm pressing? Control HK, Control X, P, F. No, 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 no. Control HK, come on. Control HK, Control X, P, F. Okay, that's project find file. That was a wrong command. So uh, project switch project. That is uh, control X P P control X P P. So that's sort of like a uh, projectile. If I press enter there, did it create a new one? Yes, that was kind of weird though. What it did. It created a new tab. It pulled up magic status, but it also saved the current window that was already there. But I think it's just because of um, magic's uh, window rules. So let me actually close out these tabs. So control X uh, T zero Control X T O control X T zero. We'll do that again. Uh, control X P P will select Emacs from scratch. It created a new tab and then pulled up magic status for that project. So uh, that's something you could do pretty easily if you uh, want to automatically open up whatever basically for any project that gets created, but also have a, a separate tab for it so that you can start um, uh, editing files or do, doing whatever you need to do in your own special window configuration, which is great. Thanks, Karthik. Yeah, you reminded me. Uh, I, I, whenever I don't have the chat on the screen with me at the same time where I can see it, then I miss things um, that I would have caught earlier. Uh, project switch commands is an A list meant to be appended to. I think you set cue it. Yes, I did that on purpose because I'm trying to override the dispatch behavior. Um, because by default, it's an A-list that allows you to choose an action. But for me, whenever I switch a project, I always want it to just do that single action. Uh, but you could definitely uh, set up... Why is Q not working in this buffer? That's really strange. I think my evil setup is broken somehow on this config. 
Um, okay, so that was that. Let me see what else I was mentioning in the list of things to do. Go back to the show notes. Uh, writing a function to show only desired buffers for a given tab. So this is one that um, you can do a number of ways, but I'm gonna try to take the cheap approach and actually change the binding for um, control X B. So this is actually something that you do with um, perspective.el. Uh, if you want to only see the buffers that are associated with a given, given perspective, you have to rebind your normal buffer switching key binding to use perspective's own switch command so that it shows you only the buffers that are in the current perspective, I'm pretty sure. So uh, we can take a similar approach and um, let's see. Defun, um, let's see, defun my uh, switch to tab buffer. So this is gonna be very simple. What we're gonna do is check to see if there's actually a project root. <clears throat> and we're gonna use the, uh, let's see, what is it called? Project switch to buffer, which will only give you buffers that are active in the current project. But if you're not in a project, then it won't actually I wanted to do that. Demo.io. So if we, if we run um, project switch to buffer right now, uh, it would just give us the list of things that are uh, associated with the project in this buffer, which is actually helpful because it gives you, it gives us the dread uh, buffer. It also gives us the magic buffer. And I think that if we were to use control X P E to open E shell for this project, then uh, project switch to buffer would also give us the, uh, the E shell for this project. So if you use project.el to work on projects, which I recommend, uh, that or projectile, I think uh, uh, also would work. Then you can use a command like that uh, project switch to buffer to only see the files for that project. And that could work in a lot of cases for you, I think. So what I'll do is go back to my config.el and I will use a similar check to what we had before, which is um, if project current, I'm just checking to see if there's a current project that I'm going to call project switch to buffer. Otherwise, I'm just going to call a uh, switch to buffer. And I don't know if I need to actually make that interactive and invoke the others interactively. Um, maybe I should actually do that call interactively so that it passes through all the uh, prefix keys and stuff like that. Okay, so that should do it. And now I can say global set key, keyboard, uh, control X, B. I think this is the right syntax. I don't ever use global set key very often. So, uh, and then I wanna call my switch, <coughs> excuse me, my switch to tab buffer, run that. Now, if I use uh, control X, B here, it's gonna give me just all the buffers available. And if I were to go into demo.el and use control X, B, it's only gonna give me stuff that's associated with the project that buffer is in. So that can be pretty helpful if you want a, an easy way to only switch to the uh, buffers in a project if you have a tab that's associated with a particular project. So if I were to do that again, so control X, P, P to switch project, I'm gonna choose a directory this time. I'm gonna go to let's say channel X and <clears throat> excuse me, it created a new uh, tab. It ran magic status. And now if I were to run uh, control X B, it's only going to show me the magic uh, buffer because it's the only thing that's currently open for this project. If I use control X F actually, let's see uh, control X P F. No, no, no. What's happening. Control X P F. Uh, I can pull any of the files that are in that project. And then now if I use control XB, I'll see that guile.scm file that I uh, have open from the project, which is pretty cool. Karthik says, uh, meta X consult buffer return P space. Consult buffer uh, P space. Yeah, so consult buffer is also a good way to do that if you want a more versatile approach. This is with some of that uh, prefix stuff that's available in Vertico or consult that I haven't really dove into yet is that right space no what's that hidden buffer p 
Because that's not right, is it? P space. More spam. Okay. P capital P? No. Okay. Let's let's check. Uh, just out of curiosity, consult. Uh, there we go. Key space doesn't seem to work for you. Narrows to the current project. Whatever your key is to narrow to a category. So category. Ah, you need to set categories. You shall source. Yeah, there's a lot of functionality in consult that I obviously don't use. But uh, I mean, this is one way that you can do it if you wanted to do it this way for uh, only switching to the stuff that's available in the current project. Uh, it would be useful to probably look into consult some more to see if there's a more versatile way to uh, narrow to certain buffers. There's also stuff like uh, Buffler by Alpha Papa that can automatically choose the right set of buffers based on uh, what workspace you're on. And I think it does work with tab bar mode. So that's another approach you could take if you wanted to. But this episode is more about just sort of like trying to come up with our own little hacks for tab bar mode. So let's go back to um was it config.el where did that file go oh it's here ah and my my functionality was defeating me okay so let's jump back to the notes uh does it work with desktop save mode so i guess the question is if you turn on desktop save mode does it save the state of everything uh so that it can be loaded the next time you load emacs so if you haven't heard of desktop save mode, it's basically just a way to save window configurations and buffer lists, I think. So if I turn that on, desktop save mode. I haven't really used this much, so I might use it wrong. Let's see, desktop save. Save the state of Emacs in a desktop file and directory dir name. Save in desktop dir. So, okay, so I saved the desktop, it went to a particular folder that was probably set up by the no littering package. That's probably not the default path. So if I were to uh, close this Emacs session, if it wakes up and does what I say. Oh, whoops. Wrong. We're not closing my main Emacs session. We're trying to close uh, this one. So I think I, I ran it in the wrong session. Uh, desktop save mode. Desktop save in desktop dear. There we go. Um, desktop, let's just do that. Oh, no. Whatever, let's save it right there. Okay, so now if I were to close this Emacs session, um, no, I think I messed that up. I'll go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, the shell. What was it VTerm? and run that Emacs session again. Uh, let's do that. Oh, come on. I think it's... There we go. All right, let's go Emacs here. Let's close that. Okay, so um, desktop load, read. Desktop read, not reloading desktop already loaded. What does that mean? Let's see, desktop save mode, turn it on. Oh, it's disabled. So it must have been on. Ugh. I'm in the wrong session again. Desktop sa save mode on desktop read. Doing something. Um, tab bar mode. Hey, okay, so it does work. You just have to make sure you have tab bar mode show, turned on to make sure that you uh, can pull everything back up again. Um, so let's just double check this really quickly. Um, here we have config.el. I think all the same buffers we were working on are still up as well. Yeah, a bunch of info buffers, just random files, that kind of thing. So if you want to make sure that you can get right back to where you were with Emacs whenever you loaded it up again, you can use... Uh, desktop save mode for that. 
Baron says, I use tab bar and EXWM for single monitor workspaces. Yeah, that's something I'm uh, planning to do also. So um, what did I want to check there? So desktop save mode. I haven't really... Okay, disable it. So I want to know if this like saves automatically. So this minor mode, if called interactively, toggle the mode on. This is just boilerplate documentation, I think. Let me see. When it's enabled, the state of Emacs is saved from one session to another. In particular, Emacs will save the desktop when it exits. This may prompt you to see the option desktop save. The next time Emacs starts, if this mode is active, it will restore the des desktop. So if we have that set up in our configuration, in theory, uh, it should come back up again. So let me uh, turn on desktop save mode. And then we can close this Emacs session and then uh, open it again. Uh, I think it did work. So if I turn tab bar mode on, yeah. Okay, so let me actually just make sure tab bar mode is on by default. Tab bar mode one. Okay, let's fix that. Let's move this up a little bit right there. Okay. So now if I uh, close the session, start it up again, then it should come back up with all the same stuff. Uh, however, tab bar mode did not display itself correctly at the beginning. That's kind of weird. Maybe I should just put it at the very end. How about that? Uh, save the desktop. Let's see, desktop save as a variable ask if new. That's interesting. All right, so let's uh, close it, start it up again. Interesting, it never displays itself. Maybe something weird about what I'm doing. Or is it just not, huh? Weird, you have to kind of jiggle it a little bit it seems. Not sure why that's happening unless I need to add that as like an after init hook or something to make sure that it happens after everything loads up completely. Uh, Jordan says tab bars only show when there are multiple tabs open. Well, by this point I've loaded, you know what? I wonder, so how about this? Let's check after init hook. Um, okay, so I don't see anything here for loading. So what does desktop save mode actually do? If we go look at the code for desktop.el, is there a hook anywhere? Let's see. Yeah, 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 add hook. Okay, so that makes sense. Desktop delay hook, what's that? That is a crazy function. Window configuration change hook. After init hook, okay, so it just puts a lambda in there. That makes sense and it checks for a no desktop argument to avoid loading that if you have trouble with it that's cool but this is a lambda function that let's see when member key command line args whatever okay so it turns off desktop save mode otherwise inhibits startup screen so if i were to do this add hook after init hook right and then tab bar mode Let's just do this instead uh, after startup. That will probably work correctly because it should show up after the desktop state is saved. Nope, didn't work. Hmm. Now it says it's enabled. Wow. That's really weird. I do wonder if that setting is messing with it somehow. So how about this? <clears throat> Try it without that on. Okay, didn't help. Ah, oh, no undo info, that's fine. Okay, so let's check after init hook. It got added first. I don't want that. I want it to be added at the end. I think there's a thing I can use for that, right? Depth. <clears throat> what is depth? Um, 
always come first. Uh, let's see, since nothing's always true, I can just give it a depth of 100, right? Let's do that. Let's um, exit down. <laughs> Still nothing. It's funny because it says it's enabled. I don't know what's happening. Baron says tab bar mode is somewhat finicky when enabled in initialization. Well, that's kind of weird because you would expect to be able to do that. Tab bar mode. Tab bar history mode. Yeah, I don't care about that too much. So what if instead I set up a Lambda interactive um, tab bar mode of one. This probably is not going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. Make sure that that's not bogus. Wait, hold on. It added it to the beginning, did it? Am I not saying to... Oh, I must have deleted that 100 at the end. 100. Let's check that one more time. Probably it's not going to show it. Yep. Okay. Eh, we'll try it. Control X, C. Jesus, come on. Yes, yeah, save it. There we go. That time it did not load anything, did it? Well, that's kind of a bust. Uh, it seems like it did actually load the... Config. Um, the session but it's not loading the tabs or is the tabs aren't being displayed. That's very weird. Try the Lambda with run at time. Yeah, hmm. that's annoying. Run at time. So we're basically just gonna delay it by one second, nil. See you again. Felipe says, please read my comments. Um, Works perfectly with tab bar mode. Just need to add desktop save mode. I did, it's right there. Thanks, nerd BKK. Um, so, tab bar mode and, so you have to do tab bar mode first. I tried that, it didn't actually work. Tab bar mode one. Let's try that, see what happens. Pretty sure it's not gonna do anything. If it does this time, I'm gonna be very confused. Yeah, doesn't do anything. I don't know what's going on with that. So what if I do Control X uh, T O? Control X T O. It doesn't actually um, show the tab bar. Yeah, see, it's it's not even doing anything. Yeah, I know. I I didn't finish writing that. So, um, oops. Yeah, you're right. Let's take this part, put it out here. Oh, no. I was right, wasn't it? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, just call run at time directly. Run at time. Huh. I don't think that's going to work, is it? It'll wait till idle. Nil. What's the time repeat function args? Okay, so let me just grab the entire lambda here. And I'll drop it there. Do the same thing here. Take this run at time part out because that's obviously not going to go there anymore. Drop that. Drop the 100. Okay, so got an extra parenthesis. Okay, so now I can try that. Okay, <laughs> it did actually turn it on then. That's great. All right, let's 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 do this. Three times seems to, seems to do it, says Pavel. Yes, I agree. Still doesn't work. That makes no sense. Okay, well, um, maybe this is a bug that needs to be reported to the Emacs maintainers because it makes absolutely no sense um, why it doesn't show up correctly. Let's let's do run at time uh, three seconds after idle, huh? And at the same time, I'm going to send a message, uh, turn on tab bar so we can find out when it actually happens. 
And then uh, this is the last thing we're going to do here. Okay, should have turned it on right then. Didn't do it. Who knows why? That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> what if you run tab bar mode three times? I bet it won't work. Let, let's just try it for the sake of science. Tab bar mode one. Let's just duplicate that three times. If this works, then we got like ghosts in the machine. Nope. Uh, yeah, there, there's some kind of like timing issue where it really doesn't want to cooperate. Tab bar mode. Tab bar mode. Tab bar mode. Yeah, if I do it manually, it works. I guess it's not reading your custom desktop save config. Well, it is. Uh, it's pulling up the same buffers again, but for whatever reason, it's not populating the tabs correctly, it seems. Yeah, Eric has a good suggestion. Try running the uh, command to create a new tab. Let's do that. Okay, so if I run uh, control X T2, it doesn't show it. I have to run tab bar mode two more times before it shows up. So that's very weird. Uh, but like we uh, like we know, uh, Emacs 28 is not a production release yet, so. Uh, Jordan, we tried that and that actually didn't work either. So let me let me try it one more time just to 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 show that happening. So tab bar mode is is set to one there. We're gonna let it run and start up. Re remove the other tab bar mode. Oh, is it up there? I think I moved it. Tab bar mode. Yeah, there there is no other one. Okay, so I'm gonna use Control X T Ret. Yeah, even switching to one that is uh, already existing doesn't do anything about it. So I don't know what, what to say about that, but it's definitely a bug, some kind of timing issue. And I don't really have time to look into it right now. Um, control X uh, T, oh, let's go to the other buffer. Control X T, enter. Yeah, that one. Uh, Eric says, for me, the bar doesn't show up until I create a new tab with a different buffer than the original one. Yeah, um, it shouldn't need to be like that. Uh, Mina says you already have a tab bar mode one under global set key. Uh, yeah, that's the one right there. And there's no other uh, time that I'm running it in the code here, as far as I know. Tab bar mode. It's just that one. These two are commented out currently. And none of those approaches actually um, worked, which is very strange, in my opinion. Elijah says you had the unconditional one and the run at time one both. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, probably I did at some point, but I, I, I fixed it. So I'll just try it one more time, see what happens. Okay, yeah, same same issue. Let's run tab bar mode manually once, twice, three times, four times. That was that was a charm that time. Pavel says perspective.el seems a bit friendlier. Yeah, but I think that probably with enough uh, tweaking, you could make it be pretty nice. If nothing else, having the uh, ability to set the global mode string up here would be pretty useful for EXWM users, I think. So I'm going to try to see if I can work that into my config and possibly get rid of polybar entirely. Uh, another thing I could possibly do is, I mean, there's, there's all, all kinds of stuff you could do there. Like you could put all of your um, chat notifications, like if you're using ERC or whatever, you can put all your tracking buffers up here. You could put um, your EXWM workspace up here. Like I could basically replicate the entire uh, polybar experience that I currently have in Emacs without having to run a separate program, which is kind of nice. Uh, for system tray, uh, EXWM already has its own system tray support, which you can do, like put it in the, the bottom right-hand corner, though it is a little bit flaky. Uh, however, I'm kind of curious about trying to uh, make some fixes to that and uh, make it better because that's kind of a very scoped down problem. Maybe it's something we could do on a stream one time. All right. I think that's it for what we wanted to try to do today. Let's see. Uh, Pavel says I've actually tried to display the list of perspectives as a tab bar, but didn't figure it out initially. Yeah. There's a function you can, um, or a variable you can set to override that, but I guess you'd have to figure out how to give 
uh, tab bar, the stuff it needs in its own way of understanding. Um, you may have to make their own data structures or something. Wasn't so obvious, but I didn't try too hard. Yeah, well, sometimes when it doesn't work the first try, you know, we've got better things to do with our time, so I can understand that. Okay, folks, I appreciate all of you being here today to uh, to watch me fumble around in the code for a while, but I think it's, you know, we, we did figure out a couple of, of kind of cool things, and you probably did get to see that this is pretty customizable, and it's worth uh, looking into if you want to have more of like a, a workspace-centric approach in Emacs to have separate workspace configs for different projects you're working on, et cetera. I've been using perspective.el for that for a long time, uh, and I might try to use uh, tab bar for that in the future and you know just see if I can use yet another thing that comes in the box with Emacs instead of using something that is like a third-party package. Uh, you know, it's, it's an option. It's not necessarily something you have to do. You don't have to use all the stuff in box, but sometimes it's fun to do that. And this one is actually very configurable, so you might be able to get whatever behavior you want pretty easily, so. Um, I will put all this mess of config into the show notes so you can go and play around with it yourself if you want to. And uh, next week, next Friday is uh, Christmas Eve. I don't know if I'm gonna stream yet. The likelihood is that I won't, but I'll let you know in advance uh, one way or the other so that you uh, ha you know whether I'm gonna go on or not. Um, and we'll see what happens with that. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in the other channel I have, Flux Harmonic, I'm gonna be streaming on Tuesday, like I mentioned. Uh, the time is very different than it is for this stream. So it's like 1 p.m. UTC. So check the, the um, world time clock in Emacs to see what time that is for you. Um, in fact, if you are in Emacs world, uh, world clock is the command. Uh, let's see, London is effectively UTC. So if you look at whatever that is and you'll be able to extrapolate from your own time zone. So uh, yeah, so that's gonna be a lot of fun, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll just experiment because uh, I don't know exactly how those streams are going to be different functionally from these streams, but we're going to try to make it a little bit different and maybe a little bit more fun. We'll see how it goes. So until next time, thanks everybody for being here today. I really appreciate all the, the, the help and the feedback in the chat. Um, and until next time, as always, happy hacking. We'll see you.